Kate already introduced me. I'm Simone. I'm a volunteer open data ambassador. Uh, like some of you I saw in the chat, uh, I live on the Upper West Side. In a past life, I managed New York City's 10-year capital planning process for New York City's Office of Management and Budget. Now I'm a business librarian at New York Public Library's beautiful Stavros Yarkos Foundation Library in Midtown Manhattan. So uh, I'm on the fifth floor. Please feel free to come and visit us. Uh, it's an incredible facility. Being that it's an introduction, as Kate explained, we call it Open Data 101. I'll be, I'm here to explain a bit about the history and mission of New York City Open Data and to offer some new skills for navigating the Open Data platform. There will be time later on to answer any questions you may have. Feel free to put in them in the chat as we go along. The mission of New York City's open data portal is to make New York City data accessible to the public. The training materials I'm using are a collaboration of New York City's Mayor's Office of Data Analytics and the Civic Technology Organization, Beta NYC. To better understand what open data means to us today, We'll begin with a brief history of past efforts to make New York City government more accountable and transparent. Most simply, the objective of open data is to make government data accessible to the public. Given the increased creation and use of data at all levels of government, both here and around the world, and its growing importance in our everyday lives, open data is most commonly considered a 21st century phenomenon. In fact, there is a substantial history of efforts to improve government accountability and transparency. Going back 150 years, we can actually trace the roots of today's open data movement to good government efforts at efficiency and to fight corruption in the progressive era of government reform. In New York City, these progressive reforms led to the creation in 1873 of the City Record an official public journal to share city notices and updates. You're looking at an image of the very first issue, volume one, number one. Jumping ahead to the 1960s, freedom of information legislation was advocated to increase public access to government documents and to better understand why certain documents are classified. You may know FOIA, the Federal Freedom of Information Act. You may have heard of FOIL, the New York State Freedom of Information Law. Freedom of information legislation made most government information available on request, at the time a revolutionary concept. You just had to know what you were looking for. In some cases, the records made public were shared widely, such as published in an article, but often the requester was the only person ever to see them. Which brings us to the 1993 publication of New York City's first public data directory. In contrast with the New York State FOIL request, where you needed to know in advance what you were looking for, the new directory made a portion of the FOIL information stored as data more accessible by listing and describing what data sets were available with a public liaison or contact by agency. Some of the systems and databases outlined in the 1993 public data directory actually still exist today. 2012 witnessed the passage of New York City's open data law. Unlike FOIL, where you have to ask for the information, New York City's data sets by agency are made public and shared with everyone by default. And unlike cities where open data may be a policy or an executive order, access to New York City's open data is guaranteed to the public in perpetuity, regardless of this administration. You can reach the data, you can reach the website at NewYorkCity.gov open data. Today, public data is available for nearly every facet of daily life. This illustration shows how the physical environment maps to some of New York City's open data. For every paved street, recycling bin, parking ticket, or restaurant inspection, there's a data point. So what kind of information can be open data? For starters, it must be machine readable. That means structured in standardized format with rows and columns that a computer can use. Let's take the example of trees. In New York City open data, there's a data point or record for every tree, for example, in Central Park. Pictured here is the original plan for Central Park. The plan itself cannot be in New York City open data because it's not machine readable. New York City open data contains a machine readable map of tree data points in a format that a computer can understand. You're looking at it right now. Created in 2015, 
and last updated in 2020, the tree census lists a row for each tree and columns with information about the trees, such as their species, location, indicated by its latitude and longitude, and size, 683,000 of them. Also, New York City open data is generally not private or confidential. In fact, data sets are closely reviewed for private or confidential data. Such information is released only when there is an important reason for the public to, uh, to have access to otherwise private information. One important instance is this data set, pictured here, of citywide payroll data containing employee names and salaries. As of 2022, New York City open data contains more than 3,000 data sets and billions of rows of data. The site has over 1 million visitors each year. The New York City open data team is a collaboration of the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics and DOITT, the Department of Information Technology and T Telecommunication. It's made possible thanks to a network of some 100 open data coordinators spread across every city agency, office, and commission, including elected officials who work with the New York City Open Data team to identify, structure, document, publish, update, and share their institute, institution's open data sets. So let's explore the New York City Open Data website. Welcome to the New York City Open Data website. This is the homepage. You can access it at nyc.gov, open data. The search bar makes it easy to find a topic that interests you. You can click on the data link at the top of the page for an overview of the more than 3,000 data sets on New York City open data. You can browse the newest or most popular data sets. Data sets are grouped by categories such as business, education, environment, and health. Data sets are also grouped by the city agencies and offices that create and maintain the data. Let's look at a specific data set by typing 311 into the search bar. Known as the People's Data Set and available 24 7, 311 is a New York City resource for assistance and general information outside of emergency situations. Available in over 170 languages and for roughly 3,600 government services, 311 is available via phone, web, Skype, Twitter, Facebook, and mobile apps. Our search for 311 data sets produces a list of results. In this instance, we'll click the top title, 311 service requests. Clicking the data set title takes you to the about page. This overview of the data set includes how frequently it, was it, how frequently it is updated, when it was last updated, and the number of views and downloads. This data set contains over 27, 27 million rows of data, 28 now, and, and 41 columns. There's also a link to the download dictionary explaining what's in the data set. For convenience, I downloaded the attachment previously. Here it is. The data dictionary provides detailed notes about each column in the data set, further explaining how this data was created and is used. Let's return to the data sets about or overview page. With that overview, let's dive into the 311 data set by clicking view data at the top. There we go. The 311 data set is a table with more than 27 million, nearly 28 million rows or records and 41 different columns. It contains every request in every corner of the city since 2010. You could try to scroll through all of these records. You could much more easily filter to see the specific data that interests you. Let's learn how to filter New York City open data. Filtering is recommended to narrow data sets, especially those with records in the millions. In this example, we'll filter to Queens Community Board 1. The result is still in excess of 500,000 records. Imagine you'd like to see all the 311 calls made in Queens Community Board 1 after January 1st, starting January 1st, 2022, assigned to the Department of Sanitation, DSNY. Anytime you see a drop down menu in the filter, there will be choices. Note that created date has a few operations you can filter by. 
In this instance, the choices for a created date include a created date include is before, is after, and is between. You also can have various choices for uh, the community board is, is not, contains, does not contain. Using the export button, you can download the smaller filtered data set to your computer in a variety of formats. Besides downloading the data to your computer, one of the most exciting powers of New York City Open Data is the ability to visualize and explore, for example, in the form of a graph or a chart, without a download, right on the website. Click the Visualize button, then click Launch New Visualization. You have the option to save your work by signing in. In this case, I'll say no thanks. On the Configure Visualization page, you'll be able to create a variety of chart types. Using the filter dropdown on the right-hand side allows you to filter your 311 data. I'm choosing data from yesterday, March 11. The, op the options along the top center allow you to select how you want to present it. Using the panel on the left allows you to select the category of 311 data you would like to present, for example, by borough. Here's a pie chart of 311 inquiries created yesterday broken down by borough. Let's try using, oh, here is a bar chart of 311 complaints yesterday, broken down by complaint type. And there are a variety of complaints, uh, noise, um, park blocked driveways, many kinds of complaints. You can also use the visual, we'll come back to this. You can also use the visualization tool to see data on a map. Here is a sample that I did earlier. Now, let's look at some tools that use open data. I'm going to the project gallery. This is a library of data tools that build on New York City open data. Here you'll find details on how citizens, civic organizations, and businesses are using New York City open data to answer important questions. For example, let's look at the Context Explorer in NYC project. It presents a bird's eye view of business app of a business application that visualizes citywide zoning and building lot data to facilitate architecture and real estate development. Many other maps and tools are created by city agencies to make their data more accessible to the public. Most of these tools also have equivalent open data sets. This is nyc.gov. This is the nyc.gov maps page. Let's explore. Discover NYC Landmarks allows you to search, view, and explore NYC's designated landmarks throughout the five boroughs, such as the Whitehall Ferry Terminal in Lower Manhattan. Zola, New York City's zoning and land use map, is a dashboard examining zoning regulations. Here you can find the zoning status for a property and discover new proposals and initiatives for a neighborhood. It uses open data and other public data sources. Population Fact Finder is a dashboard examining population profiles. It displays demographic, social, economic, and housing statistics, and explores how these statistics have changed over time. It uses data from the decennial US Census and the American Community Survey. While working with New York City Open Data can be inspired simply by curiosity, the inspiration is more likely to arise from a specific question a user wishes to answer or a problem they wish to solve. It can be work-related or just from personal interest. How does one go about answering a question or solving a problem using New York City Open Data? There are a series of steps to follow to answer questions and solve problems with New York City Open Data. The first step is to define a problem. Let's imagine for a moment that you're working for a New York City government agency tasked with implementing a support program for restaurants in the form of a distribution of small grants and loans. And you're in charge of developing this program and deciding which restaurants receive funding. How might you use New York City open data to support your work? We can see which New York City open data sets might help inform the problem. To find the relevant data sets, you might do a search for keywords like business or restaurant like we did before to choose 311. Once you've identified some data sets that may be helpful in determining which restaurants receive funding, the next step is to frame specific questions, such as those on the right, that can be answered using those data sets. 
After you've identified relevant questions and found helpful data sets, you can conduct analyses. Summarize results with visuals, like a table or a pie chart. After conducting analyses with the support of New York City Open Data, you should be better equipped to make informed decisions and or provide stakeholders with recommendations about which restaurants to receive should receive funding. If this taste of New York City Open Data has intrigued you, there are a number of ways to get involved. Contact us. Contact the New York City Open Data Help Desk to request a data set, ask a question, or report an error. You may reach us by clicking Contact Us from the New York City Open Data homepage and scrolling down. The New York City Open Data team is committed to making city data available to anyone to access online. If you request a data set and the data meets the definition of New York City Open Data, the person or agency that manages the data will be required either to respond with a date by when the data will be made available or explain why it cannot be shared. Again, see what projects and tools others have created on the Open Data Project Gallery, and you can submit your projects and encourage others to do so. As Kate explained, this is annual Open Data Week Festival uh, of community-driven events about New York City open data produced by the New York City's Mayor's Office of Data Analytics and Beta NYC. It's not too late to take advantage of other entirely free, mostly virtual events through tomorrow. We've held scavenger hunts, workshops, demos, panels, and more. Visit NYC, visit Open Data NYC for the full list. And that's the end of the presentation. I'm happy to answer questions. Thanks so much, Lon. And um, a few questions came into the chat. I know, Louis, you, you had uh, questions about uh, the OASIS map, mapping service. Um, happy to, to start with those, but for anyone else who has questions, you could either put them in the chat or if you're comfortable, just unmute yourself and um, ask the question directly. Um, I, I can start speaking to the, the OASIS um, mapping service and uh, Simone and Kate, if you certainly have anything further to add or if anyone else does, um, please do jump in. But for anyone who's not familiar, um, OASIS is a, I guess, environmental mapping um, application. I'll put a link in the chat here. Um, if you're not familiar, that is created by CUNY's Graduate Center. Um, and it includes all sorts of data. Some of that data is from New York City Open Data. Some of that data is federal open data. Um, some of that data is New York State open data. So it comes from a lot of different sources and each layer actually is derived from, from a different place. So for example, the, the layer that shows New York City Community Gardens, um, there's a New York City open data set and, and, and map of those community gardens that um, I believe is used to feed the community gardens layer on Oasis. Um, so yeah, there is, I think you, you were asking about like if there's some like duplication or redundancy there, and that's, that's not accidental. One of the reasons that New York City open data is made available as Simone was describing is so that way different people, whether they're academic institutions or private individuals or advocates or, or people who want to start a business, can make use of it because once the New York, once the data is published, it's free for anyone to use for any purpose. Can I ask uh, the question verbally? Of course. Um, I think the open data is great, and of course there are there is information that wouldn't conveniently fit into Oasis at all, and vice versa. Uh, well, not so much vice versa, but nevertheless, um, it just bothers me a little bit to find two similar pieces of information on different platforms because it does get confusing to the public generally, I think. Unless you're very knowledgeable about Oasis and a lot of people are not, it doesn't seem to be well publicized. Uh, I think that there is a possibility of uh, general confusion. And I wish there were a way in which the one which each of them then could refer back to the uh, 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 URL for the other so that people will know that they can then go from one to another. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great point. Um, I guess the one, one thing that someone was showing that project gallery and, and we have links to these URLs from their projects. And for some open data data sets, there are links to like maps or dashboards or other tools that visualize that. Um, 
they're, they're also some tools have links back. So if you if you look at like say population fact finder, that one of the tools that was being shown, there's a, there are links to all the different data sets that it uses. Um, I, I think o Oasis. I agree. Oasis is a great tool. I, I, I've used it frequently, um, and I, I think we'd be happy to um, take it as a next step for us to reach out to them to to see if we could have some more um, clear referral of like where the references are and add Oasis as well to our project gallery. Yeah, that would that would be great. Oasis, of course, is a much older platform. I've been using it for the last twenty years. I just included a link to the to their feedback. Um, definitely feel free to uh, give them some feedback. Um, and just to note, uh, it definitely doesn't include nearly all, uh, it doesn't include all of the data sets that are on the portal. Um, the portal itself is a uh, very comprehensive resource. What other questions do folks have? What types of open data have you explored? Someone had a question about summarizing data by zip code. Um, I'm not sure if you're referring to a specific data set, but uh, a great way to summarize data uh, if you're trying to like count how many items are associated with, say, a zip code, um, and you have that zip code already tagged, you could do a pivot table to sort of summarize everything. Um, yeah, that was that was me. Um, you know, we were um, they were showing uh, you know the three one one data set and you know filtered it down to like half a million rows. And I just wondered if there was something in the, I know about pivot tables a little bit, but um, is there something in the UI that would allow us to do something like that and sort of get a summary by zip code, you know, for any given, for say the borough of Queens, and just how would you go about doing that to sort of get a more manageable data, data set to download? So you, Bill, you weren't looking for just one zip code, you were looking for organizing by zip codes uh, within a borough, for example. Right. So then you'd have, you know, 50 or 100 rows instead of 500,000. It looks like there might be um, something called sort and roll up, but I'm not sure if that's exactly, if that's quite the same thing. I'm, uh, I'm going to leave that question to my colleagues. I, uh, okay. I, I did do some sort and roll up, but I'm going to leave this to you guys. I mean, I did it on my own. But. Yeah, I think the roll up should be able to, but then you want to filter it down. Um, sorry, could you put the link to the data set that you have that, we're, that you're looking at? I don't have a data set. I, um, just uh, Simone was showing us 311 data, at, um, 311 service requests. Okay. Um, is, is, zip code, uh, is, is zip code a field in that, um, Zachary? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, then um, you should be able to roll up. Um, if there's the roll up function on, um, on the open data portal um, should allow you to create a sort of yeah, that's what I was looking and for. And you download and you export that data by the rollup. Um, I don't know specifically, um, but you can filter to assert to if you create a filter that just says just that zip code, you should be able to just get the records for that zip code and export that. Okay. Well, I just put a link to a tutorial on how to do that in the chat. Um, to Kate's point, you could either do it directly using the the sorting. Um, grouping and roll, roll up function, or you could like download it and, and do it in Excel or another program. Terrific. Thank you. I don't want to break in and uh, take away somebody else's time. I do have something else that I'd like to bring up, though, so I'll keep my mouth shut until other people respond. But since nobody's talking, um, I work with a fair amount of nonprofits at various levels. Many of them produce their own data set for their locations with various kinds of information, such as uh, poverty levels or the amount of aid being received within a community. Uh, at the same time, I've also seen data sets from various electeds who do the same thing within their own uh, local uh, areas. Is there a way for people, for these groups, to send information to you guys to see whether or not you would like to incorporate them into your open data, assuming that they aren't already in there. So the, the focus of, of New York City open data is really the administrative information that is um, produced by government operations. Um, and with more than 300,000 employees, and over a hundred like agencies, offices, commissions, 
um, 3,000 data sets. Like a, a lot of the work that we um, on the New York City Open Data team does is around the uh, identification and um, standardization of, of this information and making sure that it's accurate and up to date. There, there are um, some agencies where their data is, is consolidating local information. And for many data sets, um, the same data is broken down so you can see it at a local level. Um, but in general, we don't have other sources of information on New York City open data specifically. Um, it, it, the, the, the primary um, objective is to make the information about government accessible as a means of increasing transparency and allowing people to better engage with their government. There are other platforms where people can share this. Um, I know, Kate, correct me if I'm wrong, but Beta NYC had a, a platform people were able to share like data sets that are high quality and vetted uh, previously, but um, certainly open to having Lewis, like people send things in and there's a way to request a data set that I, I could share like, in the chat um, through, through the same help desk that Simone mentioned. But for right now, the focus is, is on those government data sets. Oh, I understand. Thank you. Yeah, I just put the link. Um, it hasn't been very active, but uh, someone in our community has been um, uh, ha created the data bot, data dot beta dot NYC portal. Um, yeah. And I just put a link if you want to request a data set. So let's say you know this community group that's collecting a data set and you're wondering if the government has a similar data set, you could put in a request. And um, as Simone was saying, if, if the data set exists, um, they'll either you'll get a date when it will be published, um, you'll get a link to it if it's already published, or a reason um, for, let's say, privacy, why it can't be published. There are an awful lot of different other data sets that are being produced regularly from environmental groups that seem to be standing on their own, such as uh, I think uh, Parks does a data set on its uh, trees and its uh, uh, different kinds of, of flora and fauna. I think uh, New Yorkers for Parks do the same thing. I mean, there's a whole bunch of them. It's just a shame that there isn't one if not put together, at least there would be one reference where people could just go through and take a look at all the various platforms or URLs to check out which ones might particularly suit their requirements. I can't find any one location where I could pull out a whole bunch of different URLs. Are you looking for a data set? The, the portal is one place where you can find all the data sets. Um, if you're looking for applications or platforms built that harness the data, um, you're right, there isn't one a one-stop shop for all the tools. Um, however, the open data uh, site does have a project gallery, and then there's a lot of civic tech organizations that are pretty active, um, or sorry, there's not a lot of civic tech organizations in New York City, but there's one, and it's Beta NYC, and we like to promote um, uh, open data-driven tools um, at Hack Nights and our Slack channel um, and on Twitter and, and whatnot. But Zachary, I don't know if you want to speak more to that. I just the other thing I would say um, is, as far as like looking at data across different organizations, different types of organizations, whether advocacy ones or academic ones or government ones, something I've used um, and would recommend is Google's data set search. Uh, and you can find uh, across different jurisdictions um, and, and different, again, different types of organizations, um, all sorts of data sets. Um, it's definitely not comprehensive. There, there are certainly New York City data sets um, or data sets not from New York City government, but about New York City that are not in there. Um, but I think you could also uh, suggest a data set to be added as well. Um, and, and, and Louis, um, we'd be very much aware that there, there, is, there are things that where, where, where there exists um, like authoritative data about New York City that's not New York City government data. And it's something we're interested in, in exploring further and, and like looking into potentially incorporating at, at some point. But um, for right now, our, our focus is on improving the quality and supply of, of government data. Um, I, I got a question in the chat. I think that was said just to me. Someone looking um, at data sources for public health. I, I would say um, if, if you haven't already looked at the data by agency page that Simone showed. And Simone, I don't know if you're equipped to share your screen again um, to show how to get there. 
you can see yeah. data specifically from the city's health department. That's always a good place to start. Yeah, then, I understand. And and what I'm saying to you was not a criticism. It was just bringing a, of an course. amount of awareness. That was all. Um, and I see there's a question I, I don't think we answered from Amelia. Um, was it to get to the gallery? Sorry, Zachary? No, if you, um, if you go to the data page and you scroll down, there's data sets by agency. Um, so this is what I was referring to. If you're looking for like data about tuberculosis and asthma and different um, health conditions, you can look at the health department's data, um, Department of Health and, and Mental Hygiene. And you can see all the data sets they have available. And as I mentioned, you can also request a data set if you're not seeing. I saw there was a question um, from Amelia in the chat. Amelia, if you're still here, if you, if you want to unmute yourself and elaborate further, otherwise we could, we could try to answer. I'll just read the question out for anyone who doesn't see it um, about how, how to make New York City open data maps usable. The maps aren't useful because they are raw data points without the ability to use sample or statistical computation. I've had to download and manipulate Python instead. Um, yeah, I just generally found the mapping feature uh, on the website pretty much useless um, just because there's far too many data points. Um, so I just was asking if there's a way that you can engage some sampling through easy sampling. I'm thinking in terms of sending this to my students, actually, at some point. <laughs> thanks for the feedback, Amelia. Um, I, I think that the mapping is, is not intended to be like a replacement for a, a, a programming language or a, a dedicated mapping tool. Um, it's really just intended to have people, allow people to do some exploratory analysis without downloading anything else, without going anywhere else, without learning a new programming language. Um, so you can certainly filter down the data before you map it. And then depending on the data set, you, you, you won't see it. If you filter down the data, regardless of the data set, you won't see as many data points. Um, and if, if you'd like to use it, any of the program, everything from Google Sheets and Microsoft Excel to Python or um, QGIS or any, uh, any other platform, um, they're, they're one, you could download the data, um, which I think Simone showed before, but you could also um, connect to the data directly through the API interface that would allow you to just pull it in um, as it's getting updated. So let's say if it's run one, it's updated every day. And if you have a link through that API interface, your, whatever you're looking at, as you may know, um, would just automatically get updated as well. So the, the mapping tool is, is not intended to be a replacement for, let's say, someone programming something in Python. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I wasn't expect. I wouldn't expect a, you know, a student to be able to do Python, but I would hope that the tool could, at the very least, give me like a rough average instead of a uh, full-on raw data data. Because even when you pick one particular point, it it can get overwhelming and not even give us anything descriptive, honestly. That's just my, my, my experience in terms of trying to use it. So I just thought I would throw in that <laughs> feedback. Yeah, I guess depending on the data that you're talking about, we'd love to hear more. Um, if you want to send a question to the help desk, certainly the agency that manages the data may have some suggestions on, on how to best view it. Um, you can for for almost all the maps you click on a particular point and see the details so like on the tree map that's what we're showing you click on the point and you'd see like here's a tree that was that's roughly this, this age the size and species um so so there is a way to view it but again um it's, it's definitely not intended to be like a, a statistical tool or, or anything like that and, um i think a good place to start would be something like google sheets that that is also free um, or, or QGIS for that matter, which doesn't require programming. It is a good way to view um, spatial data. I can put links to, to that in the chat for anyone who's interested. Any other questions? Yeah, I, I do have uh, one. Uh, a teacher friend of mine would like within her school district to be able to pull a map showing the incidence of CB19 to the incidence of Department of Health stats, such as uh, environmental problems, uh, atmospheric uh, pollution, also asthma, et cetera, et cetera. Is there a way to do that through these sets or do you have to put them all together separately and then uh, try to put them together yourself? So you would like to layer different data sets? Is that what you said? Yeah. In other words, uh, 
incidents of uh, CV-19, which you could get from the uh, DOH, I suppose, for uh, any particular zip code uh, versus uh, the poverty level in that particular uh, zip code against uh, environmental problems in that zip code, such as asthma problems and air pollution problems, et cetera, whether or not there was any correlation to be shown within a zip code for the benefit of our students. Right. So again, uh, what Zachary said, this, uh, the tool on the platform isn't a statistical tool, but you do have the ability to add multiple layer sets uh, through the layers function. Um, you can add layer sets. So if you know what you're looking for and which fields to pare down to, you can you can do that. Um, but, you know, if you're trying to do a big uh, analysis, like a, a, a valid and uh, I guess um, accurate analysis, you would probably we'd probably suggest to export the data sets and pull them into a, a tool that's more um, comprehensive or has has those abilities. Right, I understand. But and of course, that's we're that's talking that's about that. we're talking about sixth graders. I mean, uh, <laughs> it doesn't have to be that accurate. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, um, I definitely like this morning. I I used the portal to uh, look at. It was in an, an event around dog data, and I looked at where I looked at a data set that shows litter baskets where where litter baskets are throughout the city. Though I don't think it's actually all of them because there's definitely more litter baskets than I saw. But uh, it's a data set of all the litter baskets, and then I also looked at a data set about where the dog waste dispenser bag, the dog waste bag dispensers are located. So I was curious, you know, are, are is there any, if I saw a dog waste dispenser bag um, or dog waste bag dispenser, would there be a trash can nearby? And if not, you know, is, are there a lot of 311 complaints about litter on the street, such as um, for dog owners not picking up their dog, uh, they're picking up after their dogs. Um, and I did, I did a quick little map where I looked at uh, looked at those data points. So you can you can do quick little um, layerings. Yeah, that would be great. I have a very quick question that is simpler than many of these others. But if I was walking around the city and wanted to see, for instance, cultural events like art installations, um, I'm just wondering how those are updated. For instance, if I was walking today. Would they be updated since, you know, say the fall or January? Um, would they be um, current? And how is that done? Sure, Zachary, do you want to explain how um, data sets are updated? By uh, Sure, I can start. And um, if anyone else wants to weigh in here, please, please feel free. So um, basically, depending on, as I think someone was talking about, every data set is generated by a particular city agency. And with that, there is an update frequency when you get to the data sets main page that um, gives you an expectation for how often the data set should be updated. And there's also a date you should see for when the data set was last updated. Um, so I think a uh, good example of this um, that sort of in, your, um, in the realm of your question is um, there is a data set of monuments in parks, which are permanent um, fixed park fixtures. And then there's also another data set that provides, um, and I'm not sure if this is being maintained currently, um, like temporary art installations in parks. Um, this is a, a, it's not directly on open data, but it's a feed to another, another site. Um, so not maybe maybe not the most um, intuitive for, for the temporary art installation data, but you can see if you click on the first link of the parks monuments data, um, you can see that it was last updated um, March second of this year, and, and and that's how you get an idea of how current that information is. Um, okay. That's helpful. That answers your question. Yeah, it's helpful. Yes, thank you. And when you go into a data set, does it indicate? where the information came from, which organization it was that uploaded that information? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Have you have you checked out the the, the open data portal? It has- Not yet. Oh, you should definitely go to some of the links we were click, we were sending. Um, if you go there, there's all sorts of information about the data set, including a data dictionary. Um, and we'll have um, some more recordings from Open Data Week that talk about uh, like data dictionary. I know Zachary was part of a presentation about that. Um, 
And uh, yeah, you should definitely check it out. It shares information about the data set, who published it, when it was published, when it was last updated, the frequency, the categories, the topics, the tags, um, who owns it, how many rows, how many columns, <laughs> all the different fields. You can learn how they get definitions of each field if you're confused about anything. So Kate, yeah. if I can break in just to to sort of cross Susan's and Lewis's questions. Um, here we go. I'm just going to share my screen real quick. I just searched Latin cultural organizations and then right at the top, you can see that it's um, it's the agency is the Latin Media and Entertainment Commission, just for example, not not updated so recently, but that was just, you know, one example of cultural organizations. But uh, here are a number of cultural events and um, park special events was updated in November. And uh, again, it uh, I think it said it on the about pages at the outside as well, but it's from the Department of Parks and Recreation Agency. Let me ask you a question about um, uh, about PR stuff. Are, are you guys going to educators and let them let them know of the of these uh, portals of this information so that they can bring it back to their school districts? Yeah, actually, um, I help lead a program called Hack League uh, with Beta NYC, which um, train teachers uh, across all five boroughs um, around how to use open data and how they can provide them with a curriculum to teach a class around accessing open data. And then we had uh, hackathon competitions um, in schools across the city um, for a few years. So, so yeah, yeah. Um, and there's there's a lot of efforts Um to that's kind of that's beta nyc's mission is to make sure open data is accessible um by as many communities as possible so if you know people that need classes uh or that's also sort of the mission of the open data ambassadors program which is um what simone is part of and uh the ambassadors are selected um to teach to basically represent um, open data in their community, and uh, we or help organize uh, classes that they will teach uh, in libraries and uh, whatever settings um, across communities or within mm -hmm. their community. And and are they geared to specific uh, grade levels? The curriculum we had um, was geared to middle school and high school. I hope you might think about doing it for uh, much lower school ages get them started when they're very young working with data sets and, and that kind of information, I think is would be really great. Sure. Yeah. If there's resources uh, available for it. <laughs> I'm, we're here to do that. <laughs> these are all great suggestions. Um, and yeah. And congratulations, Simone. This was a great class. Thank you so much. Claps and props to you. <laughs> um, Thank we, you. Yeah.